One death not injured as fuel laden truck slams into concrete fence. Indigenous Affairs Ministry sells $1.6 million worth of vehicles for $400,000. Young mother blames GPHC's doctor negligence for death of infant. And in sport, Leon Johnson's ton sends Ghana Jaguars into regional Super 50 finals. The details of these and other stories right now in this or Friday, October 26th edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A man is now dead while another was injured after a truck they were traveling in slammed into the concrete fence of the Ghana National Stadium Providence this morning. According to police, the truck bearing license number GTT24921, driven by a 51-year-old driver of Alboistang, about 7.15 hours today was traveling along the East Bank Highway when its left front wheel blew out, causing it to slam into a concrete and steel fence at the National Stadium at Providence. As a result of the collision, 44-year-old Kirk Peters, a porter on the said truck, was killed on the spot. According to the police, Peter was discovered pinned in the cabin of the lorry while the driver sustained minor injuries. It was revealed that Peters at the time of the accident was sitting in the left front seat of the lorry. It was further revealed that the truck was heavily laden with approximately 30 45 gallon barrels of diesel while heading south along the eastern side of the Providence Public Road. Police are currently investigating the matter. A blood alcohol test was conducted on the driver and no trace of alcohol was found on his breath. The driver is said to be in custody assisting with the police's investigation on the matter. The body of the deceased porter is presently at the Likens Funeral Home awaiting post-mortem examination. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Proprietor of the Tower Hotel on Main Street, Georgetown, has been arrested in Jamaica for suspecting drug trafficking charges and is expected to be extradited to the United States soon. Here are the details. Businessman Shervington Lovell has been arrested in Jamaica for suspected drug trafficking along with other offenses. The arrest was confirmed by the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit. Two other persons, a Venezuelan and Surinamese, who were in his company at the time, have also been arrested. The United States is expected to seek Lovell's extradition from Jamaica to face multiple drug trafficking charges in Guyana and other countries. Jamaican authorities have also detained a vessel owned by the businessman, which is suspected to be involved in in trafficking illegal drugs. The businessman, who is no stranger to law enforcement, was arrested in 2010 and questioned about a series of execution murders. He was later released. You're watching MTV's news update. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations in Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. 
Obrigado. Um ótimo ótimo. Oh my God, a suma tem de Ohio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Catarina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. South Dakota will ignite with top riders and drivers from the Caribbean and North America as GMR Nessie hosts the final round of the Seaboard Marine Caribbean Motor Racing Championship. It's going to be an epic showdown on November 10 to 11. Adults 2,500, kids 1,000. Action starts at 8 a.m. Who will be crowned a Group 4 champion? Can any rider top T. Muhammad? Will Kristen dominate in his radical motor racing action you won't want to miss? Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. City Mayor Patricia J. Screen came under fire today for failing to properly deal with the no-confidence motion against embattled town clerk Royston King. Chairman of the City Hall Commission chided her for accepting legal advice based on the advice of the town clerk. Here was Godfrey Brooms. A visibly uneasy City Mayor Patricia Chase Green appeared before the Commission that is inquiring into the affairs of City Hall after being summoned. However, after being continuously questioned by the loan commissioner, Justice Cecil Kennard, she became irate, which was not tolerated by Justice Kennard. If you were seeing um, a storm ahead of you and all of your sailors are saying you can't go into the storm, will you still continue to go into the storm? Madam, the police don't ask the law question. You're here to answer question. But I'm answering, but I, I did not appreciate the question, yes. Well, say that. Don't, yes, you want, don't, don't attempt to be rude. I'm not being rude. You're, you're attempting to be rude. No, I'm not. I am not attempting to be rude. You want take, that, take that sort of attitude to City Hall, not here. Excuse me, sir, but I'm not attempting to be rude, and I will not be rude in here. Can you shut up and listen to the question? Well, then I will not be able to answer questions. At today's session, the mayor, who came prepared with the two lawyers, was grilled for listening to the advice of town clerk Royston King in relation to the no-confidence motion that was brought to the council against him. That motion was filed by Councillor Lionel Jaikaran. The motion was struck out after King decided to seek a legal opinion which stated that the motion is improper. That advice came from the husband of a sitting councillor. The chairman of the commission was not pleased with the action taken by King, which was allowed by the mayor, who chairs the statutory meetings. He claimed that the town clerk should have recused himself from the matter, while claiming that the leadership of City Hall is improper. That is the reason I tell him to get 
So I hope you will have it. In defense, the mayor claimed that she does not make the decisions unilaterally but rely on the other councillors as the majority rule obtains. It was agreed by a majority of councillors that the guidance be by the attorney law be accepted. The motion was therefore disqualified and could not be debated in the House. The mayor is set to return to be further questioned on Tuesday, October 30, while King is set to appear on Monday, October 29. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Auditor General's 2017 report shows that the Indigenous People's Affairs Ministry could have received $1.6 million from the sale of three vehicles, but chose to sell them for $401,000. According to the Auditor General report for 2017, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs received approval from the Finance Ministry to sell six vehicles. The vehicles were said to be unserviceable. At the time of the audit, three vehicles were sold, a Toyota pickup, a Nissan Frontier and a Toyota Costa bus. The Toyota pickup was not advertised for sale. It was valued at $50,000 and sold for same. The AG report said that though the Nissan Frontier was valued at $100,000, the highest bid for the vehicle was $500,000. However, the ministry refused that amount and sold the vehicle for $50,000 to a non-bidder. The irregularities did not stop there as the third vehicle, the Toyota Costa bus, was valued at $950,000 and sold for $301,000 to the third highest of the seven bidders. The highest bidder was willing to pay $1,010,000. The ministry was in a position to receive $1,661,000 for the three vehicles, but settled for a meager $401,000. In defense, the ministry claimed all procedures were followed in accordance with the Procurement Act. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Opposition leader Bara Jagdu is lambasting the government for making little progress with the bypass highway approach left on the People's Progressive Party. The project was initiated in 2015, but three years later, it is yet to come to fruition. During a news conference yesterday, opposition leader Bar Chagda told reporters the government has made little significance with the bypass highway linking the East Coast and East Bank. The opposition leader over time criticized the government for using the concepts invented for a number of projects under the previous government. The Cherry Jagan International Airport and the Low Carbon Development Strategy were among the projects tweaked by the government. Um, he cannot boast about the East, East Coast Road because that too was left by the PPP. Cannot, cannot boast much about the airport, although he does, because that's a PPP project too. So very little of major significance have they achieved. Construction for the East Bank East Coast Road linkage project is expected to begin in January 2019. The 20 kilometers stretch from Ogle to Great Diamond will see reduced traffic congestion on the East Bank and East Coast highways while providing commuters with an alternate route. The consultant will be submitting the draft detailed project report in February and the final detailed project report in April. Bidding documents will be made available in May. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of 37-year-old Paletta Wade, who was found dead in her home at Kokwani Region 10 this morning. Newsroom reported that Wade, who worked as a midwife at the Kokwani Hospital, was discovered motionless on the floor of the house by her 7-year-old daughter, who subsequently ran and informed the staff at the hospital. Police sources said that there was no sign of forced entry to the house and they are investigating Wade's medical history. Police also noted that no marks of violence were observed on the body. Wade's husband is said to be on a work trip in the interior location. Wade was described as a pleasant person who was very active in the church. She leaves to mourn her daughter and a three-year-old son. Even as Guyana prepares for forced oil, the British High Commissioner Greg Quinn has warned the government against neglecting the traditional sectors with a sole focus on oil. Here is more. 
British High Commissioner to Guyana, Greg Quinn, is warning the government against attention being placed on one industry. He was at the time referring to the imminent oil and gas industry, which will see commercial production come 2020. Quinn warned the government against neglecting the traditional sectors in light of welcoming forced oil. So it is possible to demonstrate how you can both develop and build and support an oil business whilst at the same time maintaining some of the traditional um, industries um, so you don't put all of your, your eggs in, in one basket. So I think from a, a sort of a government to government perspective one of the things we would like to sort of show is how you manage to do that and um, how you deal with the problems which come from trying to do that. The British High Commissioner reminded of Europe's success in maintaining, supporting and building its oil industry. Aberdeen, Scotland has been one of the most successfully run oil industry after its first production in the mid-20s. ExxonMobil discovered its ninth oil find off Sri Guyana at the Hammerhead One Well, marking its fifth discovery in the Stabrook block. All exploration is still ongoing. When the news returns, a young mother blames GPHC's doctor negligence for that of infant. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care care professionals. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite-free, and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Save on your next electricity bill by installing LED lights. LEDs last longer, emit a more natural and brighter light, and consume less power compared to other types of lights. LEDs are ideal for solar systems. At Gaffur's, they're available in two and four feet tubes, recessed lamps, ceiling and surface mounted panel lights, area lights, bulbs, chandelier sizes and larger, floodlights, spotlights, high bay lamps, and pole-mounted outdoor lights. All of our LED lights can work with either 110 or 220 volts and can be fitted into existing sockets, making upgrades simple and easy. For the hot weather, you need AC units. Now available, my dear AC units in split system or inverter types from 12,000 BTU to 36,000 BTU. Our inverter units are rated 19 SEER, which means they consume less power whilst giving higher outputs than those offered by most competitors. Great news, we now offer free labor installation depending on areas, and you can get a 10% discount on parts needed for installation. For more information, contact Mr. Mirai on 226-5719 at Gaffour's, the name you can trust. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the Disciplined Services, Rural Constables and Tongue Constabulary. 
connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer. Engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on election day. A duly appointed candidate at the election and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on election day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated can also vote by proxy. The applicant and the proxy voter must be listed on the same list of voters to vote at the same polling station. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from Monday, 15th October 2018 at the office of the returning officer in the local authority area in which the applicant is listed to vote. The deadline for submission of proxy applications is Friday, 2nd November 2018. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit gcom's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Commissioner of Police Leslie James has had it with corrupt officers and declared it will be a thing of the past. However, he did chide civilians for perpetuating this process as he claims without an offer, there can be no acceptance. The Guyana police force has been sprinkled with rogue officers and time and again some are caught and charged. Recently, a policeman was charged for driving under the influence of alcohol. He was subsequently charged for causing death by dangerous driving. Back in July, a cop was charged for accepting a $10,000 bribe to waive a traffic ticket. It is against this backdrop that the new Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, proclaimed that corruption in the force must be a thing of the past. It's not that corruption will be wished away. We are fully aware of it. But what I can say to you, it will be minimized because we are addressing it in a deliberate manner. The top cop said while the force will continue to remind the officers of their duty, he noted that the decision to partake in corruption rests with the individual. However, Commissioner James did not totally blame officers for corruption. If you don't have an offer, you can't have an acceptance. We, have not had, we, never, we, we do not hear reports of policemen going into anybody's pocket, which is highly suggestive that when the rag might have said or, or told the offense to that offender, they themselves would have put things to the police, who unprofessionally would engage in the corruption. Court free brooms. MTV News Update. Small business enterprises will be given the opportunity to enhance their business operations through an agreement inked with the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and the Ghana National Bureau of Standard. Here are the details. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce yesterday signed a memorandum of understanding with the Guyana National Bureau of Standard. The cooperation agreement will leverage partnership for enhanced business operation and competitiveness. So if our local businesses are implementing those standards that are recognized globally, it shows that their services and their products will be readily accepted. And we can compete along any other company that is manufacturing a similar product. 40 micro, small and medium-sized enterprises will be selected for inspection to test their capacity and readiness for production. Following the findings, 20 companies will be given first-hand training in manufacturing, packaging and labeling. In addition to this, technical assistance and guidance will be given to ensure they are in compliance with the required standards. We'll provide guidance to them on how to develop policies, their procedures, how to streamline their internal operations, so we're basically adding value to what they are doing. And at the end of the process, we're hoping that they'll be able to apply for certification so that they can be recognized. The Caribbean Development Bank funded project will take effect from January 2019 and last for a period of three months. A young mother is blaming the negligence of doctors and nurses at the Georgian Public Hospital for the death of her almost one-month-old baby. The woman said the hospital failed to render timely assistance to her sick infant. Lashawn Gomes-Kerninis reports. 
Not wanting her identity to be known, the young woman related to this newscast that on Wednesday, October 24, about 1600 hours, she took her one-month-old son, who was experiencing a very high fever, to the emergency section at the Georgetown Public Hospital. The tearful mother related upon her arrival at the hospital, she was rudely told by a staff to sit and wait her turn, even though she had explained her child was very sick. Moments later, to the woman explained a Dr. Kisun first injected a child in an attempt to administer saline. However, he was unsuccessful. We went to start looking at this baby now. Dr. Kisun came out and they said go behind the doctor. And I end up go behind the doctor. When I go behind him, he bore the little boy, trying to um, give you the saline because after he wasn't eating, they say his lip was dry and his mouth was dry. He didn't eat nothing nor take no feed. And he bore it. After he bore it, he stand up and down his phone texting before he could have come back to me with his saline for put it in his hand. When he do came back to me for the, with his saline and put it in, nothing wasn't dripping. And I show him, he said, hold on. When I do hold on, he call, he go to the next one and tell this next, this lady, I didn't know her name that how um, you have to um, bore back here. So she came, when she came, she said, come mom, you have to hold his hand. I said, hold his hand for what? She said to bore, I said, bore him again? She was like, yeah. She said the second doctor who after three attempts was also unsuccessful. Eventually, another doctor was able to locate a vein on the infant's hand and insert the needle for saline. The woman was then informed by the doctor her child was very ill and that he would remain overnight at the hospital for observation. She was told to go home and return the following day. However, believing that all would be well for her child, the woman related that later that very day, about midnight, she received a call from the hospital informing her to return immediately to the hospital. The woman said she waited for almost an hour before she could have reached the doctor. When we go in, she called them nurse and said this is the parent. Um, then she word was like, um, you... You remember what I told you? That the baby's on a 50-50 chance the baby gonna die? I don't understand the need to stop with these phone as big doctors and nurses need to stop with this phone and need to take good care of people children. There's a baby. Saturday coming, this baby going to be one month. Meanwhile, efforts to contact the Minister of Public Health, Volta Lawrence, and the Chief Executive Officer of the Georgetown Public Hospital regarding the matter proved futile. According to the distraught mother on request to take a picture of her deceased child, the nurses informed her she could not. The post-mortem for the deceased child is slated for Monday. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce has identified several loopholes in the government's green paper on how it intends to manage revenues derived from the petroleum industry. At a forum today, the GCCI said the green paper inadequately demands urgent and serious attention. A three-member panel consisting of chartered accountant Christopher Ram, attorney at law Charles Ramson Jr. and president of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Diodat Indar, each related critical information about key aspects in which the green paper developed by the government for the Natural Resources Fund vastly lacks. Chartered accountant Christopher Ram boldly criticized the green paper and referred to it as a white paper which instead sets out government's policies and proposals for legislative changes. According to Ram, the paper only anticipates and speaks to a Natural Resources Fund Act. He lambasts government for failing to actively take the initiative and properly inform Guyanese on critical aspects of the Green Paper and how, if executed properly, would stand to benefit the country's emerging oil and gas sector and its people. If you look at this paper, there is not a single hint of the size of the revenues or the funds we are discussing. You have at least three. 
sets of price assumptions. The government has not yet found the time to say what kind of money are we talking about. All this big talk about a natural resources fund or a sovereign fund, and we don't know what it is. And why we don't? Because our new lords and masters at ExxonMobil have not told us what the cost of production is going to be. Ram noted while oil price volatility is one of the leading characteristics of the petroleum sector, by now the government should have adequate information from the oil giant ExxonMobil on what are their price projections and what revenues will Guyana reap at what cost of production. Ram believes that the Natural Resources Fund should be protected by a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly. Since it is not protected under the current Act of Article 216 of the Constitution, which states, that all revenues or other monies raised or received by Guyana shall be paid into and form one consolidated fund. Let's not worry and quibble about this. Let us as Guyanese advocate for changes to the most immoral, imbalanced, lopsided, unfair, insulting contract. That, we, that any country has signed within the past 10 years. Bear in mind, our petroleum contract signed with S.O. Hess and Senoc Nexon was signed after the discovery of the largest find in the world in 2015. We say we get 50%. We don't get 50%. We get much, much less than the 50% that we as Guyanese are being fooled is the particular case. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Rajesh Laka now joins us with your weekly entertainment guide. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with the Bollywood Night Halloween Party this Saturday at the Lusignan Golf Club. And to tell us about it, I have with me the promoter Samaria. Go ahead. Hi everybody. So if you guys still haven't decided what it is that you want to do with your weekend, you, ha you no longer have to because I'm giving you the event of the year. So the Bollywood Club is making its comeback and this event is going to be our kickoff event. So like Rajay said, on Saturday night, starting from 7.30 sharp at a Losing Nan Golf Club, the Bollywood Club is hosting the Bollywood Nights Halloween party and it's a Daisy edition. So we're asking all the Daisy girls to come out in their really nice costumes and we've got grand prize giveaways. So you know, if you're not really feeling like dressing up, you should because you can win a lot of awesome things. You can win like free alcohol, free flowers, a free life-size teddy bear, a weekend in Lethem at the Savannah Suites. So there are a lot of prize giveaways and you get prizes for just showing up because the first hundred people will get a free shot on entry. So we're getting the party started as soon as you get there. There's there's like no reason to not be there, right? Any prizes for the best costume? Oh yeah, there are prizes for the best costume, the best couples costume and the best belly dancing. So, you know, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. Well, as everyone knows, the Bollywood Club is really famous for its uh, DJ, DJ Robin. And of course, we can't have a Bollywood party without him. So he will be guest DJing at the event. And we continue the entertainment guide with Chow Pao Comedy Jam this Saturday at the Garage Bar and Grill. Chow, go ahead and tell us about it. The Comedy Jam has returned and there's a lot of happy feelings about that because it's been off for like about three years. Okay. The last time we held it, um, we brought Trevor Eastman from, from Barbados. And he really added a different kind of flavor to the outdoor, outdoor comedy. This time we're going with our local cats. But what we're doing, we're fusing, um, it's more of a diverse comedy show rather than just a comedy show. And include the junior uh, Calypso Monarch, which is Javinsky, and the senior Calypso Monarch, which is Onika Joseph. And you know she got your name woman as boss. So this whole show really is based on is either man could do without woman or woman can't do without man. We ain't sure what's going on, but 
this is the point of it, and we got uh, some of the best in the business. I heard there is also a segment for the audience to tell a joke and win a prize. Tell yeah, that. yeah, because the last when I started this, I started this at upscale years ago, and if you notice, there's this guy Chris Gopal who's coming on pretty pretty okay, and he started with open mic, and since then. We never had nobody else coming through because we've we not been able to identify anybody else. This open mic is an opportunity for not only persons to win prizes, but to showcase the talent. You will also be on stage. I'll tell you something. Let's come on the show. The jokes soon come out of this might hit a lot of people a little hard because we've got a lot of things to mirror from society and we're going to tire it. And if you can't take it, it's best you wait till you hear it from somebody. But it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be harsh. But the material is going to be real strong. It's going to be harsh. It's going to be real strong. Give us something here, man. Um, I just give us a couple of persons we want to talk about. Like we want to talk about the bridge. We want to talk about the tongue clock, and we want to talk about and we want to talk about some more people. And Paul's Halloween costume party is set for this Saturday at the Giftland Mall. I'm here with the promoter, Robbie. Go ahead and tell us about it. Thanks, Rajesh. Uh, well, you guys always know it's that time of year, Halloween, and Trilla. The sexiest Halloween costume party is right around the corner. It's happening at the Giftland Entertainment Strip, Boardroom, and the District Ultra Lounge. Tell us this year's team. Uh, this year's team is Way of the Zen. It's a Japanese team. So we're going, you know, back to 17th century Japan where we're creating, you know, samurais, geishas, the whole shebang. Well, the decor is right now, I guess, guys, you can check that out. It's actually happening right now, but we're going to give you like the Zen garden. We're going to give you, you know, the traditional Japanese uh, culture and also structures and, you know, a lot of uh, decor in between of, like, you know, cherry blossoms and these kind of things. Any prices up for the best costume? Definitely. We're looking to give a couple, uh, a co uh, a all inclusive carnival, Ghana carnival package for the best uh, dress couple. So from costume directly to Guyana costumes. And finally, 10 young ladies will compete tomorrow night at the Marriott Hotel in the Miss India Guyana pageant for a chance to represent Guyana at the 27th annual Miss India Worldwide pageant scheduled for December 9 to 14 in New Jersey. And that's what we have for you in this week's edition of MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lack and encourage you to have fun and be safe. Here is Celine Griffith with today's Court Roundup. Four men accused for the murder of a handyman were today brought before Magistrate Zamina Ali C. Paul at the Sparanda Magistrate's Court. Vikash Prasad, 18, of Monripo, Jesse Knight, 33, of Alboisung, Rafiq Hanif, 19, of Golden Grove, and Osafo Douglas, 19, of Good Hope, were not required to plead to the indictable charge which read that on October 21 at Monripo Pasture, they murdered Christopher Swamy during the course of a robbery. Jesse Knight was charged separately while the other three men were charged jointly. According to reports, Swami and his family were at home imbibing when four masked men pounced on them and demanded they hand over their valuables. After the valuables were handed over, the men proceeded to beat the family and shot Swami to his chest before fleeing. Swami's family then picked him up and rushed him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The four men claimed that they were tortured by four CID officers to sign a confession statement and were willing to show the scars and injuries to the magistrate. They also requested medical examinations, which were granted. The four men were remanded to prison until December 12, when they will reappear in court. A man was today remanded on a fraud charge. Chet Lal pleaded guilty to the charge which read that on October 23 at Regent Street, Georgetown, with intent to defraud, he obtained $800,000 from Victor Singh by falsely pretending he was in the position to sell him a flask of mercury. The prosecution objected to bail on the grounds that he was previously charged and is being investigated for similar offences. He will make his next court appearance on November 23. In another matter, a man was brought before Magistrate Leron Daly today on an assault charge. Quincy Lewis of 331B Field Sophia pleaded not guilty to the charge which stated that on September 18 at Crow Street, Georgetown, he inflicted grievous bodily harm or wounds to Jeremy Wishard. He was granted bail at the sum of $45,000 and is scheduled to return to court on November 16. Two men were placed before the court today on separate narcotics charges. 
Shaquille Cox pleaded guilty to the charge which stated that on October 25 at James Street, All Boys Town, he had in his possession 0.5 grams of cannabis for the purpose of trafficking. He was fined $3,000 and sentenced to six months community service at the Brickdown Police Station. Meanwhile, Oswald Hendricks pleaded guilty to the charge which read that on October 25 at Starbrook Market, he had four grams of cannabis in his possession. He was also fined $3,000 and sentenced to six months community service at the Brickdown Police Station. Finally, a man was hauled before Magistrate Liron Daly today on a simple larceny charge. Mohamed Rafiq pleaded guilty to the charge against him, stating that between the 23rd and the 24th of October at Seawall Road, Georgetown, he stole one car battery, one lead light, and alcoholic as well as non-alcoholic beverages, reaching a total value of $94,760 from Michael Joanza. He was sentenced to 12 months in prison. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the voter you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top, and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party or group of your choice in the proportional representation component, and once at the bottom section where you vote for the party, group, or individual of your choice in the first past the post or constituency component of the election. Make your mark in the box provided on the the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official, dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided, and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gy, or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Vámonos para el baño, que nadie nos está viendo. Si no me conocen, nos vamos conociendo. Sé que suena loco, pero me gusta tanto. Estar un día más así yo no lo aguanto. Vámonos a la luna, vámonos para el cine. Vamos a dar un beso que nunca se termine. Si quiere algo serio, hay que ver mañana. Si somos novios o somos panas. Y'all move styles. Simply different. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Christmas is for celebrating. Imagine having a warm, cozy Christmas with your loved ones, with your favorite food, presents, and all the things you want. With GBTI's Christmas loan, you get to celebrate in style like never before. Simply apply for your loan between October and December for quick approvals and a chance to win. A trip for two to Trinidad, compliments of Liat. An overnight trip for two at the Arawai Resort. A weekend for two at the Guyana Marriott. Visit your nearest GBTI bank and apply today. Terms and conditions apply. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. I want to celebrate Christmas with Prince and every day. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. 
Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and Napa batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. The construction of two synthetic tracks in Linden and Ruiz are set to commence soon as the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport today signed contracts with Beacon International and Builders Hardware and Supplies. There were a total of 14 tenders for Region 6 and 12 for Region 10, and based on the administration process and the Cabinet's approval, the tender for Region 6 was awarded to BK International and for Region 10, Builders Hardware and Supplies. The project was identified as the Synthetic Track Project, and it was mentioned that the signing of the awarded contracts was a critical aspect of the development of sports in Guyana. Assistant Director of Sports, Melissa Dow Richardson, informed the media that the project had been on the agenda for a very long time. She added that they are currently embarking on the third phase of the project, which involves the actual ground preparations. The works of the project were contracted by the Procurement and Administrative Board, and it was shared that the two sites that were identified were New Amsterdam Burnham Park in Region 6 and Bayrock Community Centre with Melinden in Region 10. Minister of Social Cohesion Dr. George Norton highlighted the importance of this project and added that he hopes one day Guyana will clinch the elusive Olympic gold medal. We can only, and I know we have so many of youth and both here in Guyana, but we can only honor them if we provide the necessary facility to the different areas in Guyana so that we can find those athletes. With the construction of these two synthetic tracks, one in Region 10 and one in Region 6, and the one that we have now in Region 3, I did promise, and it still remains as one of my dreams, that that elusive Olympic gold medal would certainly appear before the end of this tenure, of the, the tenure of this administration. The total estimated amount for Region 6's contract was $141 million and for Region 10's was $179 million. And the projected timeline is three to six months. Chelsea Griffiths, reporter for MTV's Sports Update. A median list A century from skipper Leon Johnson and a well-constructed hull century from all-rounder Raymond Reffer have Guyana Jaguars secure a last over win over Jamaica Scorpions and qualify for the finals of the 2018 Regional Super 50. Here are the details. Playing at Kensington Oval in Barbados yesterday, Jaguars barely sneaked past the Scorpions in the first semi-finals of the tournament, winning the game by one wicket and one ball to spear. After deciding to bat first, Scorpions ended with a reasonable 272 for 8 from their 50 overs. Out of form, Chadwick Walton went early once more, falling to Clinton Pestano in the third over of the game, leaving the score on 10 for 1. Nkrumah Bonner top scored with 76 not out, while opener John Campbell made 56 early in the innings. In response, Jaguars chased the target from 49.5 overs with 9 wickets down. At one stage in the chase, Jaguars were 200 for 3 from 39 overs, but things went haywire after Johnson was dismissed for a well-played 101. Reefer also contributed with a reasonable 68 while wickets kept falling around him. Needing 9 from the last over, it was the Southpaw here Sammy Permal who struck two lusty blows to get his team over the line. The Jaguars will meet with the winner of the second semi-final between Trinidad and Tobago Red Force and the combined campus and colleges in the grand finale on October 28. Joshua Harrington, MTV Sports Update. Cricket West Indies has saluted veteran Shivnarine Chanjabal, who was on Thursday conferred with the Honorary Doctorate of Law by the University of the West Indies. The U.E. said for 21 years, Chandra Ball Trill fans in the West Indies and all over the world. The 44-year-old is one of the most outstanding batsmen in West Indies history. He is presently one of the CWI ambassadors for the ICC Women's World T20 Tournament to be played in the West Indies from November 9th to 24. Jenny Funira, director of CWI and tournament director of ICC Women's World T20, paid a special tribute to Chandra Ball. 
During his outstanding international career, which spanned over two decades, Chandrapur played a record 164 test matches, scoring 11,867 runs, including 30 centuries, at an impressive average of 51.37 runs per innings. He also excelled in 268 won the internationals and scored 8,778 runs, with a best of 150 not out among his 11 centuries. In his first class cricket, he has so far played 385 matches and scored 27,545 runs at an average of over 53 runs per innings. He has 77 centuries and 144 half centuries so far, with a career best score of 303 not out for again against Jamaica at Savannah Park. We tell you now that the Ghana Hockey Board has wasted no time in selecting their under-19 squad for the Junior Pan American Championships. With two years for preparations, the 40 players selected will be trained under a team of experienced coaches, which includes current and former senior national players Dwayne Scott, Anthony Cole, Dwight Sullivan, Robert France, Christopher Locoon, and Robert Fernandes. Kicking things off next week with the GTNT Senior National Indoor Championships, the squad will be competing in all local tournaments against their senior club members. The GHB is also looking to send a team on two warm-up tours to Trinidad and Tobago to expose the players to artificial turf prior to the 2020 championships. National head coach Robert Fernandes said in the recently concluded Indoor Junior National Championships, he has never worked with a squad that has this much talent and depth. The players will meet tomorrow at 15 hours at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall for their first training session ahead of next week's GTNT Senior National Indoor Championships. The National Junior Men's Squad includes Michael Hing, Kareem McKenzie, Tariq Nelson, Raheem Oliver, John Fang, Mishak Sargent, Samuel Rudruff, Shamir Bagwandin, Baraka Garnett, Samuel Garnett, Shamir Garnett, Taria Garnett, Tiv Sered Garnett, Yusuf Brandt, Simeon Daniels, Shaquan Favorite, Dominic Allen, Omar Hopkinson, Deheron Wilkinson, Brandon Abrams, Paul Danrad, Kenard Jerick, Nandalal Prasad, Theodore Therens, Jonathan Williams, Warren Williams, Lewis Adams, Nickel Ashby, Shamar Boston, Hilmar Chester, Edmund Chinian, Shakim Fawcett, Leroy Gear, Troy Hodge, Oshese Savory, Ezekiel Springer, Quinn Tobin, Kidar Hopkinson, Shoren James, and Stephen Simmons. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MCV's Sports Update. Two staff members of the Guyana Football Federation participated in a FIFA Connect workshop being held in Bridgeton, Barbados from October 25th to 26th. Competitions Director Ian Alves and Coaching Education Officer Lyndon France represented the GFF at the seminar which sought to explain the FIFA Connect program to the invited FIFA member associations and allow them to participate in the testing and training on the FIFA Connect platform registration system. The FIFA Connect program is a virtual database which helps every member association register all their stakeholders in a systematic way, including players, coaches and referees wherever they are in the world. It provides each registrant a unique identification code to enable easy management while aiding issues relative to receiving compensation for international transfers and ensuring protection of minors. Among the areas to discuss at the seminar were FIFA Connect program concept and principles, training and testing sessions on the FIFA Connect platform, presentation of the support and user guides, and handover of the access to the system. According to a FIFA correspondence, at the end of the workshop, each participating member association received dedicated access to its registration system, enabling registration of clubs, players, coaches, referees and officials. The program was facilitated by FIFA Connect support and implementation officers Mitchell Woods and Edison Gomez and saw participants from Aruba, Barbados, Curaçao, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Turks and Caicos and Trinidad and Tobago. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV's Sports Update. And that's our sports pocket for this evening. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG. The best opportunity to make the right choice. 
In the region, the executive board of the International Monetary Fund has approved a $56 billion loan package for Argentina to help stabilize the crisis-battered country's economy. The Washington-based body said on Friday that the approval released $5.7 billion to the government of President Mauricio Marci immediately. In June, Argentina declared it had reached an agreement with the IMF for a three-year, $50 billion standby leading arrangement. The deal was aimed at providing breathing space for Marci's government and reassuring investors in the face of growing concerns over a plunging currency and gaping fiscal deficit, as well as skyrocketing inflation and pressing debt obligations. Both of the series, which has already received $15 billion, had to go back to the handler for the additional support and faster disbursement. And internationally, a 56-year-old man has been arrested in Florida in connection with a mail bombing campaign aimed at critics of U.S. President Donald Trump. U.S. officials named the man as Cesar Zayed. He faces five charges, including mailing explosives and threatening ex-presidents. Mr. Trump said that the acts were despicable and have no place in our country. 14 items have been sent in recent days, the figures including ex-President Barack Obama and actor Robert De Niro. They were found in Florida and New York City on Friday morning. Later, two more were discovered in California. Billionaire and Democrat donor Tom Sawyer said that a packet sent to him had been intercepted at a mail facility in Burlingame and another address to Democrat Senator Kamala Harris was reported in Escarmento. The incidents come less than two weeks before the U.S. midterm elections, with politics highly polarized. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 796. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. One dead, another injured as fuel-laden truck slams into concrete fence. Indigenous Affairs Ministry sells $1.6 million worth of vehicles for $400,000. Young mother blames GPHC's doctor negligence for death of infant. And in sport, Leon Johnson's Thon sends Uganda Jaguars into regional Super 50 finals. Catch our report at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.